Hello all, in today's video we are going to learn about classless addressing. In the previous video we have learnt about IPv4 class full addressing where the address space was divided into classes A, B, C, D and E. Now why are we learning classless addressing? Because classful addressing has become obsolete and is being replaced by classless addressing. Why it was is replaced by classless addressing? Because of the problem of address depletion, we have been wasting addresses in class A, where a class A is a very big uh, uh, class of IP addresses, where if the organization doesn't need that many addresses, the addresses are getting wasted, whereas class E is too small for mid-size organization. And the number of internet users have been increasing as such you, we are falling short of IP addresses and a device when it has to connect to internet IP address is compulsory. So to alleviate this problem we will learn about classless addressing. Alleviate the meaning of alleviate is to reduce the problem or to make the problem less severe. We will learn about classless addressing. Before going on to classless addressing, I would like to tell you that the IP address is of is, a, is can be divided into two parts. The IP address can be divided into two parts called as the network ID or and the host ID. The network ID specifies the ID of the network and the host ID specifies the ID of the host. Meaning what? I may have multiple networks. I have multiple networks where each network has number of hosts interconnected. So this is one network. Like this, this is one network. I have such many networks. So when I want to address a particular device, I should first address or identify the network to which the host belongs to. So that is why I need a network ID and then I will need a host ID which will tell me the address of that particular host in that network. So a network ID specifies the address to of the network and the host ID tells you about the host in that particular network. Now our 4 bit IP our 4 byte IP address for example, 192.100.22.1, if this is my IP address. Now, how do I identify that in this IP address, which part specifies the network ID and which part specifies the host ID? To know this, we make use of a default mask. A mask is a 32-bit number. Why is it a 32-bit number? Because your IP address is also a 32-bit number we have a mask also of 32 bit number what does this mask consists of it consists of contiguous ones and contiguous zeros okay now how how many contiguous ones and how many contiguous zeros let us understand this that if it's a class A address. Uh, if I am making use of classful addressing and I have, if this is a class A address where it is specified in the binary form, if this is the subnet mask, if the first 8 bits or the first byte is having all ones and all the other bits are zeros, then you will tell that it is slash 8 notation, meaning the first 8 bits or the first byte is used to represent the network ID and the remaining 24 bits are used to specify the host ID. So what do you understand by this? To network ID is 8 bits. So I can have how many network IDs? 2 power 8. So I can have 256 networks. In each network, I can have how many hosts can I have? 2 power 24. Okay, so here the number of networks are less, number of hosts in each network are more. So dotted decimal notation will be all ones here signifies that it is 255. 255 dot 0 dot 0 dot 0. Okay, now what is slash 16 notation? Slash 16 means that the first 16 bits the first two bytes are used to specify the network ID and the next two bytes are used to specify the host ID. Okay, so I will have 255.255.0.0. .255 .0 .0.
okay and in here slash 24 means what the first three bytes that is the first 24 bits are used to specify the network id and the eight bits that is one byte is used to specify the host id now you can see here 2 power 24 network ids are possible here in each network i will have 2 power 8 that is 256 host so here the number of networks are more and the number of hosts in each network are less okay now do i need to have only these uh, three subnets uh, masks can't i have more uh, masks for example can't i have 9 can't i have 10 yes i can have any number okay any number of the mask here 9 bit slash 9 will mean what that the first 9 bits of 32 bits will be your network id and the remaining 23 bits will be your host id okay so this is about your and now this is CIDR. We tell this notation as CIDR notation. It, uh, CIDR starts, uh, stands for classless inter, inter domain routing. We are not much bothered about it. We will learn about it later. It is just a notation used to, here. Okay. Now before going on to classful addressing, I would like to tell you about what is subnetting and supernetting. Subnetting is dividing a large network into subnetworks. Okay subnet how do i get this term subnet a large network being divided into small networks called as subnetworks subnet okay what is the purpose of subnetting why do i need to do subnetting there are two main reasons one is administration if you have a very large network administrating it it a single place will be difficult Okay, so if I divide it and conquer it, it will be easy for me. So one purpose is administration. Second purpose of um, second purpose of uh, subnetting is security reasons. If I have one single network for all the things, security concerns will bother me. So I would like to have my finance department separated as a separate network from my marketing department. Example okay so that is a purpose one point to be underlined here is sub, sub subnetting increases the number of ones in the mask what did you understand by this i told you that the number of ones specify the network id in the mask so if you are increasing the number of networks the network ids have to be increased and as such the number of ones also has to be increased and we will learn about subnetting which is a lab exercise in the next video where in the upcoming videos where I am going to teach you with a given an IP address how do I do subnetting, how do I make a small subnetworks and how we do the lab exercise. Okay. As for now we will go for supernetting where supernetting says that we are dividing a, we are combining small networks into a single network. This is called as supernetting. Okay. Now supernetting what we are doing we are reducing the number of networks here meaning the number of masks number of ones in the mask we are decreasing okay in supernetting we are decreasing the number of ones in the mask for example in classful addressing uh, you are asking for thousand addresses in classful addressing you are asking for thousand IP addresses so what will I do is I will use class C address each class C as I told you has 256 hosts so now you need 1000, so approximately I will give you 4 class C blocks. So what I am doing, there are 4 networks of class C. I am combining them to make a 1000 odd. So what did I do here? I did supernetting here. Okay, now let us move on to classless addressing. It was required that we know about mask and subnetting and supernetting before we clearly uh, understand classless addressing as the name itself specifies here i am not doing class i am not doing class full addressing i am doing classless meaning i am not dividing the address space which is 2 power 32 into classes rather i will be assigning blocks to the people who uh, to the entities which ask me for internet addresses okay so what is as it is clear that it is designed and implemented to overcome the address depletion problem okay here we are not giving classes but we are allocating blocks so let us see how the blocks are granted and we learn about what an address block means in classless addressing when a small or a large entity wants to connect to the internet it is it is allocated a block of addresses 
will give a block of addresses now we are going to learn about the nature of this block of addresses will it be fixed or will it be variable obviously it will be variable which will be approximately the requirement of what an entity is asking for as it will not be like if you ask me something i gave you class a i gave you addresses in abundance but you are wasting them but here we are giving it in approximate how many ever you need it okay so how do we do that what are the restrictions on class less address blocks the first restriction is the addresses the address block whichever you are giving now for example one organization has asked me for some addresses i want to give them a block of addresses that block of addresses should have contiguous addresses meaning the addresses should be sequential one after the other 192.100.2.1.2 Point two, point three, like that. Okay, it should be contiguous, and the number of addresses in the block could not be any number. It should be always power of two. It should be either two power zero, two power one, two power two, two power four, and so on. Okay, and the first address of the block, the first address of the block. This is the main restriction which says that the first address of the block should be evenly divisible by the number of addresses. okay number of addresses should be what raised to the power of 2 and all the addresses should be contiguous now let us take an example to see whether all these restrictions are met so that this address block can be assigned you can see here i have i have taken a small example of 16 addresses being given to a small organization these are the addresses ip addresses 205.16.37.32 this is the first address okay this is the binary form of those addresses you can see first uh, requirement is they should be contiguous after 32 i have 33 then 34 then 35 and so on up to 47 okay how many addresses i have 16 and what is 16 raised to the power of 2 power 4 i will get 16 second condition satisfied what is the third condition the first address should be evenly divisible by number of addresses what is number of addresses 16 what is the first address this is first address how will i divide this number with 16 common sense we have to convert it into the binary form okay we have the binary notation for it and to this entire number should be converted into a decimal number you see here the first requirement the addresses are contiguous you have seen second requirement the number of addresses should be a power of 2 you have seen we have 16 addresses and this is the first address after converting this first address the binary number this one okay what we are doing is this binary number is being converted into a decimal number it is coming up to this much okay this is the De decimal number when we divide it by 16 we are getting a remainder zero and this is the quotient that means it even any number evenly divisible by any given number means that you are not leaving a remainder you are getting a zero okay so all the restrictions are met now you can allocate this block to the organization so if you have more number of ad uh, addresses also the same rules will apply now this i want everybody to know that the any ipv4 address can be defined in a general format x dot y dot z dot t slash n where x dot y dot z dot t is your uh, octet 8 bytes okay 1 2 3 4 four octets equal to 32 what is the slash n i told you n is the mask which tells you that in this ip address how much is your network id this is network id and remaining all is host id then you will write n as 8 okay for example if the first 16 bits are network id and the other uh, 16 bits are host id then you will write it as slash 16 this we have discussed now now there are three things that being given a ip address in a block if uh, in you know you can get a question that in an I, they have given you a block in the ip address and they will ask you in a classless addressing what is the first address of the block what is the last address of the block and how many addresses are there in the block so you can easily find it out if you want to get the first address if you want to get the first address you can make use of you can do like this you can set the rightmost 32 minus n bits to zeros you will get the first address take an example here very fast 
you have this is your ip address as i told you i am making use of slash 28 meaning the first 28 bits are network id and remaining four bits 32 minus n 32 minus n what is the value of n 28 so it is equals to 4 that means if i set the rightmost to four bits this is the decimal notation this is the binary notation in the binary notation if i will set the first four bits to zeros the, the rightmost to four bits to zeros then i will get my first address if i again convert it into decimal notation this is my first address 205.16.37.32 this is any one given address in the block given an address in the block you are finding you are able to find out the first address likewise you can also find out the last address how by setting the rightmost 32 minus n bits to ones okay so you you see here the address given to us i get the binary value of it after getting the binary value i will set the 32 minus n that is 32 minus 28 equals to 4 the rightmost to 4 bits i will set to 1 okay so if i get its binary val uh, decimal value i get it as 205.16.37.47 so this is my last address this is my first address and this is any given address in the block so let us verify once the example which we have taken previously was that only you can see the first address is 32 the last address is 47 how many addresses we had 16 so how, how can i find out the number of addresses being given the address being given the address you can find out uh, the number of addresses like this you can uh, get using the formula 2 power 32 minus n you can get the number of addresses in the block using 2 power 32 minus n which is 2 power 32 minus 28 which is equals to 2 power 4 which is equals to 16 as we have already seen we have addresses from 32 to 47 okay 32 to 42 10 plus uh, 6 16 so everything is correct and clear so this was about classless addressing which is being actually used classful addressing is not used due to the problem of address depletion i hope you all understood now in the next video we are going to learn about network address translation and we will move on with ipv6 addresses thank you